Welcome to Parev TV. Joining us from Washington, D.C. is the director of ANI, the Armin National Institute. Uh, and we've heard about the work Assembly does, many, many different uh, areas of work. And one of them is the Armin Jersad re research. And very, very recently, uh, Dr. Dalian, we heard the exciting news of uh, the whole uh, website being now more available to Spanish speaking population. And uh, I did some research. I was wondering how many Spanish speaking people there are in the world. It's close to 600 million people. That's a very, very impressive number. And maybe you can tell us more about this project and how long it took you, because I'm sure you're going to give us some very interesting information. Well, the Armenian National Institute website has been up for more than 20 years, probably more like 23 years. And of course, it's had millions of visitors and primarily and not surprisingly uh, the english-speaking world and that's way beyond the united states canada australia uh, the uk naturally but uh, at the same time we were fully aware that there's a very large armenian diaspora and not not to uh, repeat uh, your point about a very large speaking spanish population around around the world but given the uh, significant presence of Armenian communities in uh, Latin America, uh, it seemed uh, the next logical step to bring all of this information that the Armenian National Institute has compiled specifically on international affirmation of the Armenian genocide, which uh, when we investigated, uh, turned out to be a subject of high interest uh, uh, for the Armenian communities down there then uh, preparing the Spanish version uh, seemed a logical step. In between, I have to say that we actually launched a Turkish version of the uh, uh, website. Uh, for your viewers, uh, uh, the website address is armenian-genocide.org. And you can uh, access, obviously, the English as well as the Turkish and, and, and the Spanish. We're trying to reach new audiences and introduce them to all this information that's that's the objective you know maybe we should remind ourselves that the spanish-speaking countries especially especially uruguay and argentina have been very supportive of the armenian genocide recognition they have recognized it. maybe they were the first to recognize it so there's a lot of work that is very important to promote in the spanish-speaking areas you're absolutely right. Uruguay was first as far back as 1965. They were a trendsetter. Uh, hats off to the Armenians of South America who uh, started this incredible process that is now virtually wrapped around the world in terms of 29, 30, and maybe more countries that, that recognize. And they have succeeded in uh, persuading their governments in most of the South American countries to, by now, affirm uh, and recognize the Armenian genocide. It's tremendous work, tremendous achievement, and we're uh, absolutely thrilled that we can join them in uh, continuing that process and recognizing that process. And of course, uh, uh, making all those records that they were so responsible in creating now available for everyone to see. You speak Entry. about you speak about tremendous work. Uh, uh, obviously, the assembly is doing a tremendous work in Washington D.C. And uh, I, uh, I, I know for a fact you just, in fact, mentioned it that you went from the English version to the Turkish and now the Spanish. Tell us how long it took you to move from one version to the other and how many people work on it, how long is it? Because people have to understand it's a very, very time consuming, major, major undertaking. Uh, you used the right word, time consuming, uh, if we want uh, to get it at right and accurate. And uh, we're very, very uh, cautious about that. And translating from one language to another is uh, uh, quite a challenge. And uh, since you asked, let me, let me explain it in some greater detail. Uh, the Armenian National Institute originally collected documents from around the world and posted them just to share them uh, with everyone around the world that these documents affirming, officially affirming the Armenian genocide exist. Of course, as part of our effort to support the, the recognition process. 
given that we're talking about 30 countries, uh, then we're talking nearly half a dozen, uh, dozen languages. We had posted the documents in their original language. But as we explored the uh, options of, of, of putting them in, in other additional languages, it became necessary first to standardize uh, all the uh, uh, documents, uh, all these records, and put them in English. So uh, the very first language we translated the documents into was actually English, and that itself took a while. And trust me, if you're not familiar with Dutch or Danish, it can be uh, uh, quite an interesting challenge, uh, even with Google Translation uh, helping out with some of the major languages. With other languages, it, it, it was uh, in, uh, quite an effort. In that process, I have to say, the summer interns of the Armenian Assembly who come and work for the Armenian National Institute, tremendously talented young people, and who come with a great enthusiasm and great interest and tremendous dedication, played an incredible role. Everybody who had a language skill yeah. threw themselves at this job, uh, wanted to help out, made every effort, and if they if we couldn't figure it out among ourselves, they reached out to their friends and relatives uh, from around the world. And thank goodness the Armenian community is an international community. As for the Turkish, uh, uh, not an easy language to, to translate into in, in many ways. Uh, that's been a, a three year process, uh, uh, step by step, uh, developing uh, that website. Uh, perhaps the Spanish was a little easier uh, since there are more Spanish speakers uh, in, uh, in the you know, associated with the Armenian National Institute and in our community. And that's been a whole year process uh, in itself. Uh, and I'm happy to say that uh, a good amount of the Armenian National Institute's English language website is now in Spanish. It's a, it's a very rich uh, starting phase uh, for a website, and uh, we're very pleased with that. And I think our South American uh, friends are going to be uh, benefiting tremendously. You know, there uh, an English language press release was released this week, and uh, uh, the headline read about this uh, new uh, accomplishment, and also a name was mentioned: Louisa Hayrabedian Foundation. Tell us about that foundation. Right. Uh, this group uh, uh, was founded uh, perhaps almost 10 years ago at this point uh, by the Haira Bedian family, which has been, uh, whose members uh, have been dedicated uh, to defending human rights uh, in Argentina. In Argentina. Uh, in Argentina, Buenos Aires. Uh, and uh, their focus is obviously on their uh, local domestic challenges on the one hand, and at the same time with their Armenian background, they've been energetic and intensely involved uh, in uh, promoting and uh, bringing about uh, recognition and affirmation of the Armenian genocide. And they uh, played a central role in a major uh, legal case, mm. uh, which established uh, in the court system there uh, through their attorneys and the gentleman who heads uh, uh, the foundation presently, who's the son of uh, Luisa uh, Hayrabedian, in whose memory the foundation exists, uh, played a, a, central, a central role in making that happen. They were uh, the uh, perfect partners uh, for the Armenian National Institute. We both, both organizations pursue the same fundamental objectives of affirming the Armenian genocide through every uh, measure, every legal measure, every uh, political measure. Maybe you can correct me, but I understand the ANI website gets close to 7 million hits a year. That's a lot of numbers. Uh, that's true, and it's been the case for many years. Really? Um, uh, one of the... Uh, interesting pieces of news or, or one of the interesting developments that occurred was that uh, we were at, at times thought once the centennial happened where there was enormous amount of international interest and of course the Armenian communities around the world mobilized that there may be a, a leveling off of interest uh, in the subject. I have to say uh, it's been just the opposite more and more people are visiting the website. More and more people are uh, looking at this information. And um, 
since the United States House of Representatives in October and the Senate in December uh, both adopted resolutions on the Armenian Genocide. Uh, I can tell you our affirmation page where all of these records exist, including the uh, many, many states, most of the states, virtually all of the states now of the United States with their records, those sites have been consulted extensively by uh, hundreds of thousands of people. And you're absolutely right, the seven million hits has become a norm, uh, not the exception. You know, we are today, April to 21st, and in just a few days, Armenians throughout the world will be commemorating the Armenian genocide. Obviously, we know about the coronavirus that is stopping us from mass gatherings. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, today? What, are, what, what should we be watching out for? What, are, what should we concentrate when we are trapped and isolated and not able to carry out these gatherings? You know, the Armenian community has been mobilized, aware of, of, of the situation created by the coronavirus and the precautions that need to be taken. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just impressed at the effort that every Armenian organization, every Armenian community is making uh, to go online, to hold webinars, to hold gatherings uh, through every digital and video medium. Um, it really bespeaks of the continuing dedication of Armenians to remember and commemorate the Armenian genocide. There's been no lagging of effort, uh, no lagging uh, or excusing oneself with this situation to step away from commemoration. On the contrary, I'm just uh, uh, truly impressed uh, by the uh, continuing efforts. There's no lagging, no leveling off, as you said. Definitely nice words to watch out for. Anything else in closing? Well, you know, I, I do want to add something to our efforts uh, to continue to uh, uh, reach out to new audiences. Uh, for the first time this year, we actually have a product in the Armenian language. We don't tend to think of wanting to put the, Arme the, the Armenian story in Armenian, but we are an American organization and all our products are in English. Mm -hmm. But one of them uh, created a great deal of interest in Armenia. It was uh, a, a digital exhibit on the our American military mission that President Wilson sent to Armenia, which included medical doctors and who made tremendous, who had a tremendous uh, role in relieving the plight of the Armenian people and ending, curiously enough, the epidemics that were devastating the Armenian population at the time. That story is well documented and uh, the Armenian National Institute had all the photographs and the records. We created this exhibit, the Defense Ministry put it on display and now they are it is being, it has been translated into Armenian and they are publishing it in the Armenian language. So for us, that's the fourth language of our institute uh, for this uh, 105th anniversary of the Armenian genocide. It is amazing, 100 years after the genocide, so much stuff is coming out from nowhere. Every year somebody writes something, a book, a research, something is being discovered and it goes on and on and on. And I'm sure there is a lot more that will be rediscovered. And I was reading on the last night of the efforts of the AGBU after the genocide, where a lot of money was invested in finding orphans that were in the Syrian desert, in the far, uh, 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 yeah, Syrian desert, who, who were saved by the hundreds, if not thousands, based on the efforts of the finances of the leadership of the AGBU or the Armenians at the time, really. So there is a lot that can be more researched. You're absolutely correct. It's, it's an unfinished story to be told. There will be more chapters uncovered, um, more discoveries to be made. And as to the story of the Armenian orphans, um, the Armenian people take care of their own. Dr. Adalian, thank you for your time, your effort for this information, I'm sure. The community will be uh, complimenting the assembly for its work and hopefully supporting it in its uh, continuous work in the support of the Armenian uh, interests. Thank you very much. You're welcome.